What is up? I'm Marcel and welcome back to The Modern Filmmaker. In this video, I'm going to show you how to fix a bad shot in DaVinci Resolve 17. And with these techniques, you could even save shots that seem completely unusable. <laughs> So of course we are in the color tab of DaVinci Resolve because saving a bad shot is all about color correcting, uh, usually, whether it's white balance or noise um, or underexposed or overexposed. Uh, typically, if you have a bad shot, uh, maybe something went wrong with the camera or something went wrong on set, the color correcting stage is a huge part of how you'll be able to rescue the footage. And then the grading comes in when we go to match to the rest of the shots in the project. Now the project that I'm working on at the moment uh, is a live performance with a lot of great shots. Um, and everything was going great, even ungraded. If I deactivate the grade, um, these shots look fantastic. Uh, and they're all looking good until I got to this one. And if this is a safe space, and I can be honest here, I don't know what happened. <laughs> I wish I did, but uh, all I can tell you right now is that the shots around it look nothing like this. And then I even have shots down the timeline of the same uh, keyboard player and they're completely normal looking. So I'm not really sure if if maybe a light uh, that was moving across the stage happened to hit the lens or the sensor at a, a certain way that kind of made the camera freak out, but I can say I'm confident that we can fix this. So this is gonna start with white balancing. I'm gonna hit Alt S a couple times just to get us a few nodes. And then this first one, I will actually label to exposure. And the next one I will label to white balance. And then the third one, I will label to depth. And in the exposure, um, here if we look at the scopes to the bottom right, and if you don't know anything about scopes, totally fine. Check out my how to read scopes uh, video. It will blow your mind. So looking at the scopes, uh, we can see that this image is pushed uh, pretty hard towards the red and it's a little underexposed. I'm gonna try to get back a little information uh, by correcting this exposure with the lift in the color wheels. Uh, just by going over the lift and I'm gonna raise this a little bit um, my best advice for lifting the shadows or underexposed footage would either be the lift or the shadow control here um, in the color wheels. If I reset the lift and just raise the shadows, it's pretty cool at raising just the shadows. Um, I actually want to raise a little lower than just the shadows. I actually want to raise the blacks. So I'm going to use the lift in this instance to really lift all the blacks and shadows up a tad. And then from there, I'll go over the white balance and we can start working on the white balance. And there's two ways you can tackle this. You can try to use the auto white balance, um, which uh, works really well. Uh, and it's definitely a great place to start out. So if I go to the white balance, auto white balance tool, click on this, it'll give me this little uh, pointer here. And I can click on something white or grayscale. Something white would definitely be best way to go. So these keys are supposed to be white. So I'm gonna click on these keys and see how far that gets us. Uh, it's done us okay. It's definitely got us closer, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and reset this and just start off from scratch. Um, and you can just start off from that point of from the auto white balance and kind of just take it from there if you want, but I'm just gonna start off from scratch uh, to kind of teach you guys a little bit more in the process. So if I go to the primaries bars, I can control each spectrum um, that we're kind of seeing in the scopes. Uh, and I can do it in the red, green, and blue uh, from each spectrum of light, which is really useful. So I'm gonna go straight to the red lift. Um, down at the lift, I'm gonna push this red down a little bit. Uh, I really wanna bring the green and the blue up, but first I'm just gonna bring this red down slightly. Just to a nice safe level about right here. Just minus 0 0.3, 0 0.03. And then I'll go to the green and I'll bring the green lift up a little bit. Oh. Let's see, about to, about to right there. Maybe a little extra, because the blue will make quite a difference when we add the blue. Yeah, maybe right there and then add a little blue. And that already looks pretty 
pretty incredible compared to what we had. And before we go any further, if you guys want to hit the like button down there, that would mean a lot for me and the channel. Just saying. And it might make you feel great. I mean, just try it. Just, just try it. I'm going to move over to the gamma for now and lower the reds in the gamma just a little bit, maybe minus dot zero one. And then I'll raise the blue a little. And I may even raise the green in the lift again a little bit more. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then in the red gain, I'm going to bring this down a little bit as well. His skin just looks a little awkward. Maybe pull the green up a tad. And then the red back up a little bit. And see how we have this really fine control and we're really leveling these scopes back out to a solid point. Um, and if I deactivate this node, this white balance node, I mean, we were looking all kinds of crazy, all kinds of crazy. And now we are back to at least a really good starting point. Um, from here, we can move forward. You know, all the colors are separated at the very least, I can say. Um, we don't have uh, one kind of red cast over everything. We can tell that this is skin and this is red. And, you know, this guy's wearing a blue, looks like a jean shirt, um, you know, opposed to this guy who had a black jean uh, jacket on. Um, you know, you can just see those little color separation and that's really where white balance and color correction begins by separating those colors and getting them back to um, just a normal looking spot. Uh, and then from there, you can stylize up to your heart's content. Um, but that really is a great place to start. And there's a couple little things I might do here. Uh, I'm seeing a little bit more green in the shadows. If I just lower the green lift a little bit. And then I'm actually going to shift his skin tone. Um, so if I just go over to the hue versus hue in the curves, I can click on his skin and I'm going to shift this dot. It'll make three dots for us. Uh, and this one in the middle is exactly where I just clicked in the spectrum. And I can just move this down a little bit. Yeah, to get a little more olive of a tone, not so reddish. Yeah, that looks really good. Um, okay, so one thing that's happening now is the image looks kind of flat. It looks a lot better than it did, but it still looks pretty flat because it's still a, kind of a bad shot overall when you have light blaring into the sensor like that and it makes a cast over the entire sensor. It also gets rid of a lot of depth and a lot of variation in shading and shadowing. So um, by creating depth, we'll really enhance this image. And when we can do that, I'm going to give us a little bit more room by just clicking this clips button. And so if we go into our qualifier, and that's this little color picker here, uh, we can click on this highlight up at the top left of the preview window, uh, the highlight button, and then raise the lows and the luminance. I'm going to raise the lows and the luminance to just qualify the highs of the skin. If you guys have watched my color grading tutorials, you guys have seen me do this a million times. I love doing this. There's so many ways you can do this um, and so many reasons why you might do this. I love it. Uh, so if I just raise this to where I'm just getting kind of, let's say, the highlights of his face. So once I get past the shadows of his face, about to right there. And then I'll go to the L soft and I'll soften the key here. And then go to the denoise and denoise this a little and then blur radius just a tad just to clean it up. And I'll even go through and... I'm going to go to the mask, the power windows, and I'm going to make a custom mask a curve. And I'm just going to kind of solo this guy out a little bit. Get these lights out of there. I don't really want those lights. It's mainly what I want to avoid. And I'm going to actually get this female out of here as well. And just kind of focusing on him and this guy right here. We can connect that. We move it around a little more. Get this light out of there. Get this light out of here and then we can soften this mask maybe soften more so the inside let's go inside that'll help keep those lights out 
So that's solid. That's a pretty solid mask. We can maybe go back and go inside a little bit more just to make sure you can't tell that it's masked. And then from there, in the primaries uh, bars, we can go to the gain and raise the gain a little bit. Oh, yeah. Now we're getting a little bit more depth in his skin, which is nice. If I turn that off, look at that. Look how flat his face was. Raise this up a little bit. And then maybe go to the gamma, raise the gamma just slightly. And then pull the gain back down a little bit. And one thing I'm going to do as well is go to the mid-tone detail. And I'm actually going to drag this down. That'll kind of soften that area a little bit. Give us a nice kind of soft highlight. Deactivate, activate, deactivate, activate it. Pretty nice, pretty nice. What we can do actually, let's hit Alt S and do another one. Uh, so I'll label this one depth as well. And then come back to the qualifier. Hit the highlight button. Raise the luminance and get a higher highlight. So before we were about right here. We got, we got just past the shadows. Now I want to go past the mid-tones just to the highlights of his skin and his fingers. About there. And then I can hit the L soft button or the uh, drag the L soft up a bit. And then the denoise, a little blur radius, a little. And maybe a little less blur, a little less denoise. It's getting blurry. All right. Hit off the highlight button and then come back to the gain in the primaries bars. Drag that up. See, now we got a little bit more highlight on the skin. A little bit more. Super nice. I'm actually going to take the saturation of this down a little. Yeah. And I'm going to mid-tone detail. I'm going to drag that down a little. And then I'm going to come over to the key and turn the key output gain down to 0.500 less. And if I deactivate, activate, deactivate, activate, that is nice. That is really, really nice. Uh, beautiful, beautiful. And so let's look at the other clips that are around it to see if we can match a little better. All right, so we do have a warm cast of light because it is a concert, so the light is actually shifting the whole time. Um, you can kind of see, let's say, in this shot here. So there are all different kind of colors coming onto the screen. Gosh, that already looks way better than this red craziness that we were dealing with before. I can't believe it. So if I go back to this shot, take a look. It's a little, I guess, push that a little bit more towards the orange. So if we make one more node with Alt-S, this one will be the grade just to match it. And we'll go to the primaries wheels. And I'm going to go to the lift, and I'm going to shift this a little bit towards the, I think, towards the purple-bluish. Just slightly. Like, you can see that I barely even moved these parameters at all. And then I'm going to go to the gamma, and I'm going to push this a little over towards the orange-yellowish. I'm going to reset that. Let me try again here. Actually, let's go to the log wheels so we have a little bit more control. And then in the mid-tone, I'm going to move this a little towards the yellow-orange-ish. And then the highlights, I'll do the same thing. And then if we deactivate, yeah, a little more yellow. And come back to the wheels. I'm actually going to move this lift back to where it was. Maybe push the lift a little bit over towards the orange because it still had a cast. Reset that one more time. Try that again. Yeah, I can be a little more happy with that. And then actually in the gamma or in the gain, I might try to go the other way.
Yeah. That matches a lot closer there. And then, see, she's got a cast as well on the drums. Oh, yeah. And then one last thing I might do, just for kicks, is come to the curves and then go to the luminance uh, versus saturation, make a dot towards the bottom, and then drag the shadows down. Just because I'm seeing a little bit of, I'm seeing a lot of color in the shadows, it looks like. Yeah. Like that looks a little better. A little more spot on. Then we can even go to the hue versus saturation. And I can even bring a skin tone up a little bit. Yeah. Let's check this out full screen real fast. That looks nice. Okay, one last thing. One last thing. If we add one more node with Alt S and then go to Open Effects, I'm just going to add a glow in here. And if you go to your glow properties and come down to Composite Type, go to Add and go down to Soft Light, click that. Go up to Shine Threshold, pull this down all the way down to zero. And then come to the opacity, and I'm going to pull this down a little bit too, just to lighten it up, lighten up the effect. But that makes all the difference in really making this thing look like a great shot. Before, after, before, after, just that glow. It has that way of just bringing your eyes to where you're supposed to look. I love it. If you guys enjoyed this video, definitely feel free to click that like button. And if you did not enjoy the video, feel free to click the... And of course, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave them in the comment section down below. And make sure to subscribe if you want more videos on DaVinci Resolve. And as always, guys, I'm Marcel, and this has been The Modern Filmmaker. I'll see y'all next time. Peace!